So this problem says find the sum of each sequence. So let's just take a look at this. This is k equals 1 to 40. That's the sum, and it's 8. So if we think about what this is doing, this is really just 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus dot, 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 plus 8 40 times. So if you think about 8 40 times, we should get 320. That almost seems too easy, but it's true. It is 320. So take a look at these. These are the summation formulas. And the one we actually used here was this first one, number one. So if you think about it, we had, went from k equals 1 to n, and this was n times. And all I did was take that number c, which I had here, and times it by the where I ended. So that gave us 320. So now we also have these other formulas that we can play around with. So then let's say I had this. So let's say I was going from... 1 to 50. So if I look at my formulas here, that will be number 2. So what I'll write here, instead of writing all those out, so I would have to write otherwise um, 1 plus 2 plus 3, because essentially what I would do is I take this 1 here and plug it in for k. And that's where that's coming from. So then when I get a 2 is my next one, so k equals 2, I plug that in for there. Uh, for k, and that gives me 2. So that's where these numbers are coming from here. And then plus dot 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 plus 50. So I'd have to go all the way out this way. But these formulas are really nice because I don't have to do that. I could get away without doing that. And what I can do then is I can use this formula. Now, this number up top here, this 50, is actually my n that we see here. And think about it, because that's as far as we go, right? We go to n. So that's the idea. So that 50 is my n. So that's just going to be 50 times. And in there, it's going to be a 50 plus 1. And it's going to all be over 2. So this does simplify. This is 50 times 51 over 2. And right away, I take advantage of this 2 and this 50. Now it's going to make that 25. So really, I just have 25 times 51. So that's going to equal 1275. So there's our answer for this one. For, for the last uh, directions, it told me to write out the... Um, the sums, the right of the sum. This one is telling me to find the sum, and that's why this is different. This is why we're ending up with just numbers here as opposed to just strings of numbers I'm adding or subtracting together. So this is number B. Let's try another one. So this one here says the summation of, from k to um, from k being 1 to 16 of 3k squared plus 2. So now, our formulas don't apply to this one directly. So if you take a look at this here, okay, I can't break it down to any one of these here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull in some other formulas. So take a look at these. So hopefully you can see these okay. So these formulas are simply telling me that I can actually, if I have some multiplier times my ak, that I can actually pull it outside and just deal with the sum of ak by itself. Or I can actually split my sums across addition and subtraction. So that those are some really nice properties there. So what does that mean for us here? I'll show you. So first off, I can say that this equals the summation of k equals 1 to 16 of 3k squared plus the summation k equals 1 to 16 of 2. 
So again, I'm using, actually not again, but I'm actually using this property right here that I can split across addition and subtraction. So here's my addition here, and I can split it. And that's what I did here. So now I can also use now this property one that says if I have this, I can actually pull the C outside of the sum. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna use that first property. And that's gonna give me, so I'd get this. So I'm able to pull that three out that I had here to the outside because of that property one there. Now I can use my other formulas and actually find these sums now. which would be here, and I would use the k squared one, which is this one here. Okay, and I'll use that one first, and that means it's gonna equal this here. So that's the one I'm gonna use first. So this equals, and I have a three there, and that's gonna be this three here. And then the sum of k equals 1 to 16, my 16 being n, keep that in mind, okay, then I'm going to use this formula here because that's my k squared. And that means I'm going to put the number 16 up there for my first one because it's n. And then it's 16 plus 1. And then it's 2 times 16 plus 1. And that's all over 6. And remember, don't forget I'm timesing that by 3. Okay, so that's this first piece now. So that's this piece right here. So it's here. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other piece. So I have this plus here. And that's this plus right here. And then I have this uh, summation, k equals 1 to 16 of 2. And that's going to be this top one here. It's going to be this one right here that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to say that that's going to be 2, which is this, oops, which is this number here, oops. And that will be times n. My n is 16. So this is really going to be 2 times 16. So really what I have here, and I'm just going to simplify here, that's really just going to be a 2 on the bottom now. So I'm going to get equals 16 times 17 times, that's 33, all over 2. And I can simplify a little more, and that's going to be 1, that's going to be 8. So it's really 8 times 17 times 33 for the first piece, plus 32. And this equals, when I multiply all this together here, 4488 plus 32. And my final answer then is going to be 4520. So that one was definitely more involved. I used a couple of the summation formulas, and I also had to understand how this thing splits. That this sum here can split across addition and subtraction. And then once I understood that, I also had to understand that if I have a multiplier in there, a constant, I can actually pull the constant out. So there's our answer for this one. And then use these handy-dandy formulas here.